Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I wanted to show you guys the Odroid XU4Q. Now this is basically the same thing as the original XU4, except it has a passive heatsink installed from the factory. You can buy an aftermarket heatsink and put it on your original XU4 with no trouble at all, but they wanted to come up with something quiet because one of the main complaints was the fan noise. It never bugged me, but I guess some people are just really sensitive to noise. In my opinion, this is the most powerful single board computer you can get for under 100 bucks. I have several computers that were over 200 that are more powerful, but a lot of people don't want to spend over $200 on a single board computer. With the Odroid XU4, you also get a really awesome community. There are tons of operating systems available for the XU4, like Android, Android TV, Ubuntu, Diet Pi, Laka, Recall Box. There's basic support for RetroPie now. There are tons of operating systems available for the Odroid XU4, and the community is really helpful. This board can be booted from a micro SD card or the optional EMMC module that Ameridroid sells. If you're looking to get a hold of any Odroid products in America, Ameridroid is the place to go. I'll leave a link to their website and their Amazon page. Here's a quick comparison of the original Odroid XU4 and the Odroid XU4Q. As you can see, really the only difference is the heatsink on this thing. It's a passively cooled heatsink and it does a great job. As for the raw specs on the XU4, they're really great for a single board computer. For the CPU, we have a Samsung Exynos 5422. It's an octa-core CPU. It has four Cortex-A15 cores that run at 2 GHz and four Cortex-A7 cores that run at 1.4 GHz. The GPU is a Mali T628. It's a six-core GPU. It does OpenGL ES 3.1, 2.0, 1.1, and OpenCL 1.2 full profile. 2 gigabytes of LP DDR3 RAM. For storage, you can use a micro SD card or an optional eMMC module. HDMI 4.1a, gigabit ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port. For supported operating systems, this is just a basic list here. There are a lot more than this. Android, Android TV, Ubuntu, Laka, Batocera, Diet Pi, Armbian, Recall Box, and basic support for RetroPie. This is actually a short list of supported operating systems. I will leave links to the Odroid forums so you can check out what they offer. As far as single board computer communities go, the Raspberry Pi definitely has Odroid beat, but Odroid has a really big community. In my opinion, I think this comes in second place right under the Raspberry Pi. Lots of stuff going on, community driven content, lots of operating systems and tons of information. The XU4 does require more power than the Raspberry Pi 3, so I'm using a 5 volt 4 amp power supply. Instead of using a micro USB cable to power the XU4, they opted for a 2.1 millimeter barrel jack, which will definitely deliver as much power as this thing will need. Since my channel focuses mainly on old school retro emulation, I'm going to be testing Batocera 5.12 on this board. I'm going to demonstrate some N64, PSP, Dreamcast, and some PlayStation 1. So here we are with Batocera 5.12. I've already installed a lot of games here, but mainly I wanted to go over some N64, some Dreamcast, PSP, and PlayStation 1 games. One of my favorite features about Batocera is this section here, Missing BIOSes. If we go in here, we can see which BIOSes we're missing for what system. And if we go into one, well, if we go into a correct one, we can find the MD5 checksum, search online for it, find that BIOS, and place it on our SD card. I'm missing five BIOSes for MSX. I don't have anything installed here, but it's just a cool option to have it built into the operating system so you can see what you need. As of making this video, Batocera 5.12 does not support video snaps, which is unfortunate, but I'm hoping they will release an update very soon on that. We still get box art. You can scrape through the system if you'd like or add your own. First game I wanna test is Conker's Bad Fur Day for N64. This is notoriously hard to run on the Raspberry Pi 3. Let's see what it does on the XU4. I just went ahead and got through that 30 minute intro so you can see how the game plays. Really smooth, especially compared to the Raspberry Pi 3. This game is actually playable on the XU4. I'll just run through here a little bit. I do notice a little bit of slowdown every once in a while, but the game feels great. Nothing that you can't deal with. There are a few graphical glitches here and there, and you'll see one coming up right 
after this cutscene. Give it a second, right there, over in the grass. I'll run back. Little glitches here and there. Little stuff like that I can overlook for now. And hopefully in the future, all this stuff's going to be fixed up with these emulators. So this is using MooPen64. It just runs a lot better on this hardware. Next up, I'll test out some Dreamcast. Now, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 does work good, but the thing is, there's a couple glitches in the sprites themselves. It has a lot to do with the Mali GPU. We'll go with Aqua GT first. Recast and Mali GPUs don't really go together very well. There's a lot of graphical glitches in a ton of games, especially in my experience with like the MP400s and stuff like that. And this is exactly what I was talking about. As you can see, the shadow on the boat is a little messed up. Now, the game's definitely going to be playable, but you're going to get some graphical glitches here and there with this one. Yeah, that shadow is really messed up on the back of the boat. Next up for Dreamcast, Test Drive 6. I don't notice any major glitches going on. The game feels really smooth. Shimu also works great on the XU4. There are some glitches under his eyes, and like I mentioned, that's due to the Mali drivers. Mali and Recast just don't mix well. Next on the list, PSP. So there are three games that are really hard to run with the PPSSPP emulator on ARM hardware. That's God of War Chains of Olympus, Midnight Club 3, Dub Edition, and Tekken 6. All three of those games run sluggishly on the XU4, but there are hundreds of games that are going to run perfectly. We'll go with Power Stone Collection. Now I would show you God of War, but it's not worth it. It runs at about 28 FPS, which is very low. It should be at 60. Here's Power Stone Collection. This is Power Stone 2 out of that collection. I got four people on screen right now. FPS is listed in the top left hand corner and we are pretty much at a consistent 60 FPS. Some other games that run great on the XU4 using this PPSSPP emulator are Little Big Planet. That runs pretty much on anything. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, Final Fantasy Dissidia. Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, and there are several others that work really well on the XU4. Heading over to PlayStation 1. Now, it doesn't take a lot to run PlayStation 1. The Raspberry Pi 3 does run it pretty well. I just wanted to test it out here to show you guys that we get good performance in the PlayStation 1 emulator also. I've been messing around with the Odroid XU4 a lot lately, like a lot more than I have with the Raspberry Pi 3, and one of the reasons is the power this thing puts out. It puts out some good power, you can play a lot of your favorite retro games with no stuttering at all, and I love Neo Geo. In my opinion, the Neo Geo emulator on the XU4 does run a lot better than the Pi 3. So that's it for this video guys. I've made tons of videos on the original XU4 running Android, Ubuntu, all kinds of operating systems. I will leave a playlist in the description if you want to check that out. I got a bunch of videos on it. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'm going to leave links to Amazon and Ameridroid in the description below. They are a bit more pricey than the Raspberry Pi 3, but you are getting a lot more power. 
The Raspberry Pi 3 is $35. You will need to get a power supply, SD card, and things like that. The XU4 is $61 without a power supply or $68 with a power supply. You're also going to need an SD card or an eMMC module, controller, HDMI cable. So no matter what you look at, it is a little more expensive, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.